This one is called the tangled slip, as in our hands are looking a little tangled. So on this one, I am absolutely digging this variation, this split, because I feel like it's a much more approachable and a good entry level split versus a Russian split. A Russian split is kind of an all or nothing and can be a little bit sketchy. This one, you have so much more control. And I also find it's less intense on the hamstrings. Russian split can be a little bit intense on that hamstring, especially also because it drops down lower. This one stays on more of a diagonal, regardless of how much of an over split you have. Okay, so for this, you're gonna be getting into it from a cupid. Doesn't matter how you get into your cupid. You can invert up into it, drop down into it, whichever. So if you're now trying to do the math and calculate which is your good split, just so you know, whichever knee is the one that is hooked in your cupid, that's gonna end up being your back leg in your split, okay? So that would be your hip flexor. The bottom foot of the cupid, that's the one that's gonna put a little bit more strain on your hamstrings. So that being said, of course, before doing this move, if you have some slightly cranky hamstrings or tight or you just haven't tested them out today, I highly recommend that you pause here and spend a little time stretching out those hamstrings, okay? If you need some tidbits on stretching those hamstrings and how to kind of improve those, check out below, and I'll include, of course, some flexibility things to help you open up those hammies in preparation for this move, okay? Or maybe you have this move, but you just want that split to look a little more, you know, extended. So we're gonna go from a cupid. Let's talk about our hand position, and we're gonna talk about it right side up because Sometimes we get upside down and we forget where our hands go and whether we even have hands and which hand is which side. So whichever knee is up in your cupid, that same hand is gonna go thumb up under your knee. The other hand is gonna go around the backside of that bottom leg and it's also going to grab thumb up. Okay, in a Russian split, we end up with thumbs down, cup grip both sides. This one, we end up with thumbs up, both hands are in a true grip, which I think is also one of the reasons why this split is much less precarious for most people because it's a true grip, which gives us much more of a feeling of control quite often over a cup grip, okay? So that bottom foot is on the pole as it would be in a Cupid or a Russian split. You wanna make sure your foot is not horizontal on the pole, but once it's on the pole, rotating it down so that you feel your toes catch and your heels catch. There's this kind of push and pull a little bit of your foot. So the arch of your foot and you're really wrapping your foot around this. You do not have to be 100% comfortable in your Cupid to make this move your jam, okay? Because we're never fully letting go with our hands. I know there's a lot of people that, you know, Cupid is not their first love or their 50th because they don't like the feel of their foot on the pole. Um, this one is for a lot, for many, it's not quite as scary because we still have our hands on the pole. Okay. So before starting in on this, A, you should be pretty comfortable with your Cupid. You don't have to have a hands-free Cupid, but you should be comfortable getting into it and hanging out there for at least a few seconds with at least, you know, one hand off. Maybe you have one hand on and that's totally okay. And then of course you also should have spent a little time on those hamstrings, give them a little love to make sure that you don't overdo it going into this. Okay, so we're gonna go from a cupid. Um, you can be on static, you can be on spin. Um, this move works on either one. Of course, just like any extended move on spin, it's gonna slow the pull down, okay? Um, I do find with this move, it doesn't feel harder on spin. There is, yeah, you feel a little bit of movement with it on spin, but nothing that really makes it throw you out of the move, regardless of which direction that you're spinning with this. Okay. Um, so generally the question I get from people is, you know, should I do this move on static or spin? If you are comfortable on spin, this move will be fine for you on spin. If you already get a little anxiety or not hundred percent comfortable on static or on spin, sorry, make sure you get super comfortable with this move on static before you try adding it onto spin. Okay. So we're going to go into our Cupid. Once again, get into it however you want. From that Cupid. That top hand is going to grab underneath the knee. Bottom hand, thumb up, around the leg, around the placement of the bottom knee. Nose is kind of towards that bottom knee. Then when you're ready, you're going to keep pushing with the bottom foot. Top leg comes off and extends out. Hold as long as you want to. When you're ready to come back in, 
You can rehook that leg into your cupid to exit however you want. <coughs> Excuse me. So a couple of things about hand placement in this. Much like a Russian split, the higher up your hands are in relation to your leg, the more stability you're gonna have, but the less extension you're gonna be able to get, okay? So if this move is new to you, definitely start with that hand like right up under that knee of the cupid, and then the other hand, you know, somewhere around that bottom knee, maybe slightly above. You don't want them too close together. You wanna have them spread out. So basically one hand is here and one hand is here. As you feel more comfortable with this, if you're someone that has a pretty nice and open split and you're wanting to open your split more in this one, if you cheat your hands down a little bit, you'll find you're able to extend out into this move even more, okay? But when I say cheat your hands down, go in little increments, because much like Russian split, as you move your hands down, it makes it less stable, okay? So you're trading stability for extension. So you definitely want to make sure that you're very comfortable with this move going into it. Um, Unlike Russian split, I find with this move, because we're in that true grip and just the placement of it, the farther out we go, it doesn't make it harder to come in, okay? That being said, as with Russian split, when you are ready to release that top leg, don't release it right up, okay? The best thing to release it is when you do, don't just think legs straight up towards the sky. Instead, take that leg off of the pole. Let's see if we put it right here. Take that leg off the pole, bend it toe to butt, and then extend it back behind you. If you end up with the leg right here, more straight up and down, or even not quite straight up and down, depending on your slip, you're more likely to feel a slide. The sooner you can lean away from the pole, I know mentally it's scary, but physically it's actually gonna give you more traction with that bottom foot, and you're gonna be able to hold it a little bit better, okay? Um, placement of the leg on this. You probably were able to see as I was spinning around, and if you didn't, you're gonna look for it when you watch this again. It's not a square split. That leg, because we're not totally square based on our hand position, pole position, everything, we're like, instead of being squared up to the pole, we're kind of open. That back leg is also very open. It is not a square split. So when you release that back leg, think of, instead of taking it here, taking it over here. Okay, if you take it right here, A, you're gonna kind of feel like you can't hold it as well. You're gonna feel almost like you're coming out of the split. And B, it's forcing you into more of a square position, which might be a little harder to hit that line. So better yet, picture you're trying to hold a quarter in your butt cheeks and you're gonna cross over here. Okay, so this is the tangled split. Try it on spin, try it on static, try it low as you get comfortable try it high. There's some variations on exits on this, but of course, initially you want to be comfortable with this exit just coming back to a cupid. That is your safe bet. And then as you feel comfortable with that, there's some other thread throughs and fun little variations on the exit that you can also play around with. So let me know how it goes. Looking forward to it.